Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor, back today with another amazing, amazing geometry node. And this time we're actually looking at fire. And trust me guys, I know the issues with setting up fire. It's a real pain to do these simulations, to get it to run right, to have it rendering in both EV or cycles. It's just a pain. The other thing is, you will know that running multiple simulations also is really, really heavy on your computer. But if you look here, we have got this running in real time in EV. And I can also tell you that this is literally just one click of a mouse and you will have fire in your scene. So with all that said, before we begin, I just want to ask you all if you can please, please, if you've took one of our Udemy courses, then go over there and give us a review for that course because we're not getting nowhere near enough reviews to the amount of courses being taken. And this is actually having an effect on people taking our Udemy courses in the future. So if you can do me that favor, please guys, I'll be very, very grateful. All right, with that said then, let me show you just how easy this is to use and how we get these effects. Now, when you first open your blend file, you will actually be receiving this. So you will have all of these examples to actually work with and see how we actually did it, including, for instance, the candle flame, the brazier, the magical flames, and also a couple of realistic flames as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press the space bar just to stop the animation. I'm going to go over here then to put it on material just so you can see a little bit easier what I'm doing. And then all I'm gonna do is click on the two interlocking links. And we've got our cursor over here, so that's a good place to start. And what you can do is you can just bring in a plane. So Shift A, let's bring in a plane just like this. Go on over to Add Modifier. And then what we're gonna do is add in a geometry node, click the little down button, and then all we need to do is add in fire like so. And that's it, as simple as that. You can see already, we've got a beautiful fire there. We've got some sparks coming off it. And you can also see just that we've actually got some um, smoke coming off it as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller because you can actually scale this in real time as well. And now I'll show you what all of these options on the right hand side actually do. Now before moving on to that, the one disclaimer I do want to say is that this fire will work in both EV and Cycles. You can render it out in both of those. It will not work, however, in anything less than Blender 4 because there's a lot of new nodes now in Blender 4 that we have used to put this fire together. So if you're running anything less than Blender 4, I recommend that you upgrade to Blender 4 and then you should have no problems running this whatsoever. Now, the other thing is, if you're going to be rendering this out with cycles, for instance, just make sure that you come over to the right hand side. Um, let's put this on cycle so you can see what I'm doing. Let's scroll down and you will have one that says um, light paths. And on here, this um, where it says transparency here, if you're getting a few dark shades in your actual renders, just turn this up. So turn it up by another 20 or something like that and then see where it renders up, um, out like. The reason is because we're layering this fire on there instead of simulating it, which means that sometimes if we don't turn this up, we're going to be getting a lot of uh, shadows being cast by the other layers. So just make sure you do that. That's it. It's as simple as that. Once you've got that bit, it can be rendered out in Cycles or EV. And generally with EV, you'll have no problems whatsoever. So let's now come on over and just make sure that this is on EV. And then what you want to do is just want to make sure that Bloom is on, Ambient Occlusion is on, Screen Space Reflections is on. Just tick all of those on. And now we should be ready to go. So let's actually put it in real time so we can actually see what we're doing. Let's press the space bar. And what we can also do is go over to the right hand side and we can do this as the actual flame is actually working. So that's really great. Now, first of all, you will notice that we can actually turn off the smoke if you want to. You can turn off the particles as well if you want to. So you can see straight away um, you're able to do that. Let's turn them back on for now. And then what I want to show you is first of all, the flame. So with the flame, the way it works is, as I said, it has a resolution, which is the resolution of the actual fire. And then we have layering on top of there. Now, the more layers you actually put in here, the actual denser the fire is actually going to be. So if I put this, let's say at 30, you'll see instantly then we get a lot more realism within that flame. So this flame is designed not only for stylized flames, but you can also get a lot of realism out of it as long as you're prepared to put these layers up. Now, the higher the layers go, 
the more cost it will cost. Just remember that to your computer. So don't go too crazy. I think we have set this up for a maximum of 100. And you can see here at 100, it is struggling a little bit because there is a lot of uh, layers there. But you can see just how beautiful that actually looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this down to something more reasonable, like 20, just to show you actually what we can do with this. All right, so the next thing we can do is we can pull out the actual radius of this. Really, really easy to pull it out or bring it in. Just a simple slide on over on your geometry gnome. The other thing is we're enabled to actually change the height on this. We're enabled to change the fire to something like this. We're enabled as well to bring it back down, of course, to nearly um, zero. Just depends on what you want. So I'm just going to bring it back a little bit like so. Now, the other thing before we move on to the emission is we're able to change the speed. So you will notice this is the speed at the moment. We're able to actually pull this all the way up and have it going much, much faster because I know like speed with fire is actually really important and you want to get that right look for what you're actually creating. All right, so once we've done that, then let's move on over then to the U. We're able to change the U of the fire simply with a slider just like this and you're able to get that exact look that you're actually going for. You're also able to change the core U so let's say we've got a U of green and we want the core to be a red or something like that. We're also able to change the core of it as well. Now, better than that, if you actually mess up, all you can do is you can just go right click and reset to default value and then just come to your core U, right click and reset to default value. Just like that. It's as simple as that to do it. Let's also come up and reset to default value and what we've done is we've also enabled it so that all of the default values make it as easy for you if you mess up just to go back and reset the default value now let's look at the emission so you will see at the moment we've got an emission here we're able to turn that up and you can see now as an effect in real time with the eva render engine let me just double tap the a to take that off and you can see just how much it brightens up the rest of this so let's turn it up even more let's go 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 more and you can see how that looks. We're also able as well to turn up the core emission. So let's put this on something like 50. And what that's doing is it's actually turning up the core of the fire. So if I come down and put this on 10, you will see now it's only the core that's actually being lit up, as you can see. So you can see we're just lighting up our core there. Because sometimes you might want it where the center of the fire is going to be really, really bright. And the outside of the fire, you know, is not going to be as bright burning. So... There's a lot of variations that you can get out of this. And you can see we've got actually candles, we've got braziers, we've got magical fires, we've got realistic fires and stylized fires and everything in between you can get out of this. Now let's move on to the smoke then. Smoke obviously with fire is really, really important. First of all, as you've seen, you're able to turn that off and on. You're also able to bring in your own smoke if you want to. So just change this material. And again, we're able to layer it up. So the more layers you have, the more realistic the smoke's going to be, the more cost on the machine. But you can see just how easy that is to do. Now, the most important thing with actually smoke is you want to be able to control how high the smoke actually goes up. So we've got a control to actually do that, as you can see, like so. Um, so you could have this coming out of the back of a plane because you're also able to animate these as well. So you could have a fireball coming out of the back of a plane and you can see you've got sparks and things like that. All depends what you want, even a meteorite or something like that. All right, the other thing then with the uh, smoke is we're also able to change the U on the actual smoke, but we've got to make sure that we turn this grayness down first of all. This grayness basically controls how black the actual smoke is. So now we've got that changed down, we're able then to change the U of the actual smoke like so. Now, the moment we turn this uh, grayness uh, all the way, where is it? All the way, not the core grayness. Let me just turn that down the grayness all the way up, you can see now that we're actually getting really, really dark actual smoke. And you can see also that I'm able to actually tr slightly change the U of the smoke and make it lighter or darker. And then again, I'm also able to change it to really, really black using the core grayness as the actual slider, as you can see. Now, of course, we're not able to really see this at the moment because of the fact it's on a black background but you can actually get the idea. This is going to be pretty dark from there. And you can see now just how nice that looks. You know, a fireball coming out of an engine or something. Now let's just disable the uh, smoke at the moment. Just so you can see the rest of it. So we do have sparks as well, of course. We're able to turn them on and off. And what we're also able to do 
is turn up the speed randomness. So at the moment, you can see they're looking fairly nice. Let's turn this speed randomness up. And now you're going to get a lot of rare, uh, variations in how these things actually come off. Let's say you're doing a bonfire. If you're doing a bonfire, the sparks actually do come off in a really twizzly way, as you can see, and all over the place. So we've took that into account. The other thing is we want, might want to turn up the density of these. So once you turn them up, you will see that it's near enough instantaneous. In real time, you're able to get those dense little sparks coming off. The other thing is if you want your sparks to go all the way up into the sky, for instance, let's just turn the uh, lifetime up to something like 10. And you will see as well that after a little bit of time now, these will be flying up really, really high up into the sky, as you can see now. And there we go. So everything in here has really been thought through. You can also change the U on the actual sparks. And the other thing is you can also come in and turn off everything and just have sparks because that's another thing that's important. You might just want to do a render with sparks in the background. Well, we've got you covered there as well because not only are you able to change the U of the sparks, you're, if I come down here, you're also able to change the scale. So you're able to change the scale if you want them really, really big or really, really small, completely up to you as you can see. And you're also able to change the emission strength. So if you want them much, much brighter, you can also change them a lot brighter. So that is our new actual uh, geometry node, guys. I don't think there's anything like this out there at the moment. All the links will be down below, of course, like every other time. And the last thing I want to say before moving on is the fact that we're really now back on Skillshare. A lot of our actual courses that we had, you know, on other channels are now near enough all on Skillshare. So if you've got Skillshare, give us some love over there. That would be great. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a short advert from our sponsor and our sponsor is us and if you want to join the best patreon in the game then check out this video as for me thanks a lot guys happy modeling see you on the next one cheers hey everyone do you want to have access to hundreds of blender products every single month then check out our brand new patreon setup which is probably the best in the industry especially for beginners to Blender. Best of all, we now have four Patreon levels, pretty much for any budget. Or if you just want to follow us over there for the latest news on 3D Tudor, then that's also fine. So let's now take a look at these ranks and stay till the end to find out what we really have to offer. So rank one is all about just supporting us at five euros per month. And this is just to say a big thanks for everything that we do here. Rank two at 10 euros per month comes with a free course every single month. And if you've seen the scenes that we've been creating here on YouTube, where you can get your hands on any of these for absolutely free. And you will get your name featured at the end credits of all of our YouTube videos. Moving on and stepping it up to rank three at 19 euros 50 per month, you get pretty much the same as you did in rank two, but this time we also give you two geometry nodes per month absolutely free. And moving on to the big one, which is rank four, the top tier that we have at 48 euros 50 per month, and you pretty much get the whole shebang. Two free courses per month, any of our geometry nodes, any of our model packs, any of our YouTube scenes, but best of all, you also get the complete asset manager file, complete with our entire library of compositors, materials, and assets. And this will just keep growing. So whatever your budget, there's never been a better time to support us here at 3D Tudor. And I think we provide one of the best patrons in the industry. So head on over, check out our Patreon, Follow us over there for the latest news. And if you can, we'd be very grateful for any support, large or small.